Hello and uh, season's greetings from the island of Rhodes in uh, Dodecanese, Greece. Uh, here is SV5 DKL and uh, with this instructional video I'm going to demonstrate how one can set up a fully automatic working unattended FT8 robot for your amateur radio station. Undoubtedly Mr. Joe Taylor and his team have done a magnificent job regarding new digital modes that are meant to be used specifically for weak signals work. But as time has showed, some of these modes became so popular, especially due to their ease of speed and uh, operating, that uh, they have transformed into a mania for the current majority of uh, operators worldwide, being used on all HF bands, however losing the sense of uh, the weak signals mode. So tuning up and down on 40 or 20 meters at a casual afternoon nowadays, it's more likely to find S9 plus 20 dB signals at FT8 frequencies rather than on CW, SSB or RTTY portions. At this point, I'd like to make clear that I'm not against the use of any mode, but I strongly support that semi or full automatic PC to PC digital modes should be acknowledged and awarded separately from the rest of modes that require even the least human intervention. In particular, I find that AWRL has made a mistake validating FT8 and JT65 confirmed QSOs for the digital part of uh, their DXCC award program. At least they could have issued a separate award category for these modes. Ok, so let's get to work. As you uh, may have noticed already, for implementing my FT8 robot I will be using a WSJTX final version core software. Let me mention at this point that the source code of the program has not been altered in any way. Well, all WSJTX users know that when the message sequence of a QSO is over, a new window pops up for the user to check all QSO data and click on Lock QSO button to lock the contact. After that, the Enable TX button remains inactive, so the operator need be there to click on that too to continue calling CQ. For the scope of the FT8 robot, you will need to have Auto Sequence and Call First boxes both checked. Uh, the FT8 robot will take up the task of doing these clicks when the circumstances demand it. This can be very easily performed using a third-party software that can, uh, that can handle multiple macro commands operations. In my specific case, I have used the Quick Macros software, which is a very powerful macro commands package. Quick Macros is not free or shareware, but you can use it as a trial version for 30 days. After that, you will have to register it for the cost of uh, 60 US dollars. But be assured that it's worth every cent of it as you can use it to automate almost every function of your PC. So, uh, while I have been introducing this video, you have seen that I'm running WSJTX on, uh, on 40 meters with uh, auto sequence and call first the box is checked. I have already worked the station, his uh, Yankee Uniform 7 Yankee Golf, and now the logging window has popped up. So let's create a macro that will wait for the popping up of this window and then it will click once the uh, OK button uh, followed by one click of the Enable TX button at the main window of WSJTX. Uh, watch closely how easy it is to create this man macro command with just a few clicks and uh, be careful that it is of top importance that the position and the size of both programs windows should remain fixed uh, for the robot to operate flawlessly. So, let's get to start programs and use quick macros. So here it is, and uh, for the scope of this uh, video I have uh, already 
created a new macro, an empty one, which is called YouTube. First of all, we have to uh, go to item properties of uh, this macro command and uh, set the trigger. The trigger is uh, uh, the function that uh, tells this macro command when to uh, energize. So we go to uh, accessible object, accessible objects, then uh, event objects, and then we go to show. And this is the trigger we want. We want this macro to uh, get to action when this window shows up. Okay. So we only have to insert uh, a couple of. Uh, uh, data here and we can find this data when we get to Windows controls find window or control using drag and checking this window so you see that the class of this window is this one QT5Q window icon let's copy that let's insert that in here and the text is the name. Let's copy that. Let's paste it here. We're done with this. Okay, next thing is we have to go to macro properties and in can run option we choose yes except the run button. Also if you're going to use multiple uh, macros uh, with uh, quick macros software you have to get here if a macro is running and choose run simultaneously we don't have to check anything else this is our trigger and we click on OK and insert this code to uh, the macro uh, function okay so now we have to record our macro. How to record our macro? We click on record and we now do the actions that are required for uh, what we wish to do. So we get to uh, this window, the logging window of WSJTX, click once on OK and then we get to uh, the main window and click once on uh, enable TX. I'm going to halt it. Okay. Okay, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't have clicked on uh, halt. So we're going to delete this line. You may have to uh, to click on insert when uh, uh, insert the code on the program uh, right when you click on enable TX. Okay. So this is the code we now have. You see that our macro is uh, ready. Okay? So, what it does here is that it looks, uh, it, it focuses on the uh, logging window and goes to these specific pixels of the window and pushes the button OK Enter. This is the button that logs the QSO. It's this one. And then the next action is uh, on another window, which is the main WSJTX window. This is in the caption of the window. And at this coordinates of this window, it uh, clicks on Enable TX. So what it does, in general, is uh, when you get this trigger, so when the window pops up, the logging window pops up, it clicks on OK, Enter. It logs the contact. You have seen the contact logged in my Logger32 uh, logging program. And then it goes to uh, the main window and check checks the box Enable TX. So uh, if this goes on and on, it will uh, automatically log every QSO you make and uh, restart the Enable TX uh, procedure. Uh, okay, so uh, what I would like to uh, say here is that it's best to insert before the focus. Uh, you need to have 
some time for idle so we just write wait one second before clicking the OK button and the same before clicking the enable TX button wait for one second and we save our macro command so uh, now that our macro is created uh, we just have to enable it and uh, keep both programs running so uh, WSJTX will keep calling CQ on the set tick frequency exchange the message sequence with the callers and uh, quick macros will do the necessary clicks when required this will continue until you close any of the two programs uh, in my setup since um, the 24th of July 2017 when I first put it put this robot in uh, operation and until now 24th of December that's five months it has worked already over 13,500 QSOs from my station in none of which I was present in my shack so that's a roughly average rate of 2,700 QSOs per month for nothing uh, whoever will set up a similar FT8 robot using this method please keep in mind two things A. Uh, check your local, uh, your local legislation regarding unattended operation of your station that's uh, very important and B. I'd advise you to set up several macros into quick macros in order to uh, incorporate some logic control for uh, instance uh, when the correspondent stops replying for uh, some reason uh, let's say uh, for uh, due to a uh, QRM or uh, maybe he has lost power or maybe he has lost antennas or anything so uh, you don't want uh, your FT8 robot uh, calling and calling uh, uh, and exchanging the same signal report uh, with uh, no answer from the other side so you have to incorporate some logic like that or even uh, to re refresh the uh, WSJTX uh, main window when uh, maybe that goes idle so uh, my automation is uh, completed with uh, WSJTX sending via UDP port all logged Q contacts uh, to Logger32 as uh, you saw here with uh, the station from Yugoslavia and uh, Logger32 in turn uh, automatically uploads them in real time to clublog.org and eqsl.cc with uh, the help of uh, November 2 Alpha Mike Golf add-ons uh, this is really very simple and very very handy and uh, what uh, I only have to do finally is only uh, that uh, it takes me just uh, one click to upload these logged QSOs from the robot to ARRL uh, logbook of the world just a click from N2AMG's uh, software okay so uh, this uh, macro is enabled I'm going to exit quick macros now and um, you also have to exit from uh, the taskbar and we are going to uh, run again quick macros this is just to uh, enable the macro function it is already running the blue uh, the blue arrow here shows that it's already working and um, we are going to uh, witness the operation where I'm going to, uh, to show an example of uh, QSO I'm just going to click on enable TX and um, you will see how the procedure goes on uh, for the scope I'm, I'm not going to uh, to use any more the microphone you're going to hear the WSJTX uh, uh, sounds so uh, maybe you will need to uh, lower a bit your your volume control
show that and uh, I had to uh, let me just mute the the audio from the transceiver all right you saw that it automatically uh, worked the uh, whiskey alpha whiskey alpha one Sierra alpha Zulu station and after the uh, QSO sequence the message sequence it locked the QSO from the window that pops up here then it clicked into enable TX button on the main window and finally it starts again calling CQ uh, on the same frequency, the set uh, TX frequency um, and also here in Logio32 the QSO is already logged and of course it is already uploaded real time in club log and eqsl.cc so this is it and if you have any comments or any questions feel uh, free to send them to my email address which is sv5dkl at hotmail.com so many 73 to all and I wish you a very happy healthy and prosperous new year 2018 for you and your families <laughs>